Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for September 7th, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled God is Faithful. I want you to know that. I want you to know that we serve a God who is faithful. And what, what, what I do on a daily basis is I take the word of God and I give it to you in a way that you can see, hear, and understand, in a way that you can process and digest, in a way that you can apply to your daily living. And I want you to know right now that God is faithful and we're going to apply that to this day. We're going to apply that to this week. We're going to apply that to our lives so that we can become the men and the women that God has called us to be for such a time as this. God is faithful to us and we will be faithful to him no matter what you're facing right now. Even if you want to give up, cave in and quit and you tuned in right now, you just tuned in and you don't even know how you stumble across this thing and you're watching this dude. You don't even know who I am. Good. Just know that God loves you and God is faithful. He is going to encourage you. He's going to build you up. Our God is faithful to you. Amen to that. You ready? All right, so let's get into the word for this morning. And so um, I'm going to share with you something that uh, I was meditating on yesterday. So ever since I started this series last week, God is Faithful, I've been meditating on it. You know, that's how I do it. I just kind of think about it all the time. And uh, yesterday, right before I was about to go in church, something was heavy on my heart. And I shared a quick video on social media, and I'm going to flow in that same vein today. Basically, I'm going to build on what I said uh, yesterday on that quick video for those of you that watched it. If not, don't worry about it. I'm about to give it to you now. The title of today's message is, You Must Believe God is Faithful. Now, our God is faithful, but you have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to receive it. You have to be convinced of it. You have to be fully persuaded that everything God said to you is going to come to pass. Why? Because things are going to get hard. Things are not always going to be easy. You There will be disappointments. There will be setbacks. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to deal with disappointment. You got to learn how to deal with discouragement. You got to learn how to deal with, hey, I really thought this was going to happen and then it didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to deal with setbacks and, and all of that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some things with you this week to build you up because our God is faithful. No matter how bad things get, no matter how bad things look, if God said it, he will perform it. If he declared it, he will make it good in your life. Say amen to that. All right. So let's get into it for today. What does this mean for you today? I have two things to share with you in this morning that I was going to share three things, but it's too much for today. So I'm going to just share two things. I'll keep flowing in this vein tomorrow. Let's get into these two things. This is where I need you to rid your heart and mind of all distractions. Two things. Number one, here we go. You ready? Here we go. Number one, God never promised that it would be easy. God never said, God never promised us a perpetual picnic. God gives you a promise, but then he never said it was going to be easy while you go down the road to that promise. So standing in faith to experience in the natural, like in the earth realm, what you believe God revealed to you in your heart can be one of the most rewarding experiences of your life. When God gives you a word, you receive that word. You were in church, God gave you a word. You were in prayer, God gave you a word. You were in your prayer closet, God gave you a word. You were sleeping, God gave you a dream. You were awake, God gave you an open vision. You were daydreaming, God gave you whatever. God gave you a word. God sent, you were in Walmart and God sent somebody to you say, excuse me, I don't normally do this, but God said, God gave you a word. And you received that word down in your heart. And now you have the word and you're believing that word. And you have stood in faith and you believed and you received it. You decreed it and you declared it. You even had the audacity to take God public. And you said out loud what you had in your heart. And you're like, oh my God, I said it now. And now it's at the risk of looking foolish. And then it happened. And then it came to pass. And then that can be, I'm saying, to receive, to what to receive in your hands, what God revealed in your heart is one of the most rewarding experiences of your life. It's the life of faith. And this is how I live. I've been living this way for over 25 years now. So this is the life of faith, right? But it can also be one of the most challenging things to do too. Let, I'm going to be honest with you. See, when God reveals something to you about the plans that he made for you, you got to realize a few things. First of all, you got to realize that those plans are future to you, but they're past to him. So, so for God has already been to your future. So when God reveals something to you, he's revealing to you what he already planned. He's revealing to you what he already saw play out. He's revealing to you what he's, so it's already past to him, but it's future to you. And so the problem is that when, because it's past to him, 
then when God speaks it and it's future to you and God is, we're in time, we're, we're living our lives out within the continuum of time, but God is not in time. God is in eternity. When God speaks to us in the book, uh, in my book, I share that God always speaks to us from the position of what I call the eternal now. So when God speaks to us, it always sounds like it's now. Like God says something, boom, I'm giving you this, boom, I've called you to do this, boom. And the sense that you get is that it's now. So, so you call your girlfriend, you call your homeboy, you're like, oh my God, you put it on your vision board, this is it, and it's happening now. The problem is that that because God is not in time, God is in eternity, his now may not be your now. And so God gives you something, and for you it sounds like now, but then for in the natural, it may not happen for weeks or months or years or decades. You're thinking, did that dude just say decades? Yeah, I said decades. It may not happen for 10 years. I'm saying, I'm saying that's how God, how, that's how it is with God. And so he speaks something to you, and you got to understand that, listen, the life of faith is not something that, that's always going to happen immediately, so it's not always going to be easy. God expects you to believe what he said until you see what he said. And this will require you to make decisions in the present based on what God revealed to you about your future. And so the life of faith is I'm making decisions now based, I'm making decisions in the earth realm based on what I believe God revealed to me in my heart. And so I go into my prayer closet and I see one reality and I come out of my prayer closet and I go to work or I'm running a business or I'm dealing with my friends or my family and there's another reality. And it's because the earth hasn't caught up with heaven's reality yet. And so now I have to make decisions in the present based on what God revealed to me, not what I see. So I, I'm, I'm walked by faith, not by sight. And so, so now I'm making decisions now based on what God revealed to me that's in my heart, not by what I see in the natural. And so I have to make those decisions and that's the life of faith. And so God doesn't take time into account because God is not in time. He's in eternity, but we take time into account. And so you have to believe that no matter how long it takes, if God said it, he will perform it. If God revealed it, he will make it good. I believe God. Say amen to that. All right. Another thing that happens is that God doesn't give you all the details. And so, so God just conveniently leaves out the details. And so if God gave you all the details, especially the challenging details, that the details that you would experience along the way, most people would just run the other way. <laughs> Forget that. You know, I'm not even trying to do all that. And so, so God gives you this, this glimpse of glory and you get excited because you got this glimpse of glory and you saw yourself doing something that you've never done before. And God put this down in your heart. Oh, I'm supposed to go to that college. Hallelujah. But God didn't show you all the stuff you was going to have to go through to get to that college. Or you say, oh, I'm going to be running my own business. Hallelujah. But God doesn't show you all the stuff that you're going to have to go through to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? To make it successful. Or God's, you know, and so God gives you this glimpse of glory, but he conveniently leaves out all the details that you're going to have to experience along the way. And so God doesn't take the suffering into account because to him, the suffering doesn't even matter. It, it doesn't even matter. In, Ro in Romans 8 and 18, Paul said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And so and let me give you that from the Rick Pena version. It doesn't matter. God, you, God wants you to live your life with this attitude. It doesn't matter how much suffering I must endure in order to see what God said, because I reckon that the suffering that I endure right now is nothing compared to the glory that's going to be revealed through me as I experience God's promises. I have to believe that God left out the details, but God knew all the details. And so God knew all the crap I was going to have to go through in order to experience what he said. And God called me to do it anyway. And God's grace is on me to do it anyway. And so I'm not going to give up. I refuse to give up. I refuse to cave in. I refuse to quit. God never said it would be easy. He just promised to be with you every step of the way. Say amen to that. All right. Number two, I only have two things for you this morning. Number two, you can choose to quit if you want to. Look at me. I, I, I want to be honest. Brother to brother, brother to sister, just you and me, right? Forget everybody else. Just you and I. Let me be honest with you. You can quit if you want to, just to be straight up. If you don't want to do this no more, if you don't want to believe God, if you're like, oh, this whole life of faith stuff, I don't know. If you want to go back to just living like a mere human and you're born again, you can quit if you want to. Just be, I'm being straight up with you. God is not going to force you to perform his will. God is not going to twist your arm. God is not going to make you 
become the man or the woman that God called you to be. If God ever forced you to do something, then it would be an act of manipulation on his part, and it would not be an act of submission or faith on your part. So in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy 30, uh, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, in the Old Testament, the Bible says, I'm giving you a choice between two ways, right? This was Old Covenant, Old Testament. God spoke through Moses. I'm giving you a choice between two ways. And I ask heaven and earth to be a witness of this decision. You guys get to decide. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring a blessing. The other choice is going to bring a curse. So choose life. I'm giving you the answer to the test. Choose life, then you and your children will live. God was basically saying, listen, you have a choice. You can choose life or death, blessing or cursing. The choice is yours. Everybody up here in heaven, we're watching. We're going to document. Heaven, heaven is a witness of whatever you decide. I'm not forcing you to do anything. You guys get to choose. He's like, I'm not going to force you, but I'm going to tell you what the, what the right answer is. Right? I'm going to give you the answer to the test. Choose life. I'm setting before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then I'm telling you, choose life. That was Old Testament. In the New Testament, basically what happens is you're born again through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit says something like this. I'm giving you a choice between two ways. And I'm asking heaven and earth to be a witness of your decision. You can choose my way or you could choose your own way. You can choose the life of faith, which is the life that I established from the foundations of the world. And, and yeah, it may not always be easy and it may be challenging, but it's going to be the life that I want for you. Or you could choose your own path. You could, you could choose your own desires. You could choose to be selfish. You could choose to do life on your own. So unlike Deuteronomy 30, where God was basically saying, hey, this is a choice between life and death. Let me be honest with you. If you're born again, this is not a choice between life and death. If you're born again and, and you say, you know what? I don't want to do what God wants me to do. Fine. If you're born again, you're still going to go to heaven because you're not going to heaven be, be, because of purpose. You're going to heaven because of salvation, because of what Jesus provided for you on the cross. So if you're born again, you've accepted Jesus as Lord. You repented of sin, but you don't have the faith to become the man, the woman that God called you to be. You're still going to go to heaven, but you're going to go to heaven only to realize that you missed out on God's best and you never became the, the man or the woman you were destined to be and you never laid, left the mark in this world that you were destined to leave. And there's some people on this planet that now missed out because you didn't have the faith to be you. You didn't have the grit and the resolve and the determination to be who it is that you are destined to be. So you gave up. You gave up on yourself and you gave up on God. And now God had to send somebody else to do what you were supposed to do. Because God is not going to let those people miss out on the blessing because you were selfish. So, so you can do it. Like, if you want to give up, give up. You're like, oh, great. No, I'm being straight up honest with you. God is not going to force you to do anything. If you're like, this, this life of faith, I'm tired of it. And if you're like, the life of faith, like, I'm tired of having to pray and to seek God, and to be led of the Holy Spirit. I'm tired of having to just seek God concerning everything, and then believe God for these things to happen. I just want to go back to, like, you know, just make, do my own thing. Okay, go ahead. You can live as a mere human if you want to, if you're born again. And if you're born again, you're still going to go to heaven. But you're not going to maximize the purpose and the potential that God placed inside of you. You're going to make it to heaven only to realize that you missed out. You missed out on the opportunity, the one chance you got to become who it is that God destined you to be. You only get one shot at this thing. The life of faith is not always easy, but it is rewarding if you don't give up. Paul said, don't grow weary. Don't get tired of doing what's right. Listen, okay, I know. I, it's not always easy having to believe God. It's not always easy having to be led of the Holy Ghost, to be led of the Holy Spirit. My children know, hey, Dad, can we do this? I don't know. Let me pray about it. Oh, there you go. Yes, because I need to hear from God, doggone it. And so it's not always easy to know that you're, that you're being led of God, that, and then you're going to stand in faith, and then when you get a word from God, you believe it. You even tell your children about it, and you guys set your faith in agreement, and then your children have to watch as you go through years while you keep believing and to, and, it's, and, and it looks like it's getting worse before it gets better, but then it finally happens. And then now your children see an example of what faith looks like. Doggone it. Yes, my dad chose to believe God. My mom chose to believe God. And they are believers and not doubters. And they walk by faith and not by fear. And no, it wasn't always easy. And I saw how it got worse before it got better. 
But God said, I know what God said. Let me just give you a quick testimony. This is not in the written word, but but this is something I just remember. The house that I'm in right now, I remember, we. I know God told me this house. I know I didn't even want to move and God told me to move. And then we were looking for a house and I didn't, I didn't even want to go through all that process. And we looked for a house for nine months. And then finally, this was the house. And this was the house that was bigger than anything we ever imagined. It was greater than anything we ever wanted. And God said, no, this is the house. And the day we were supposed to close on this house, we were selling another house and we were selling our other house. And the day of closing, we were supposed to close on the other house at 9 a.m. and then come over here and close on this house at 12 p.m. And my kids came over here and I sent my friend over here and everything in the other house was already packed up. Everything was already in boxes and the movers were coming. And my friend was over here in this house with my kids. They were already in their rooms. They were already dreaming about what it was going to be. And the other people didn't show up. To, for the closing. And they, they they decided at the last minute to back out of the deal. And I needed to sell the other house to buy this house. And in that moment, and, and Isabella and I had like $160,000 cash locked up in this deal already. And, and, and if it didn't happen, they gave us 30 days. And it was like, if this doesn't happen in 30 days, you're going to lose that money or is at the risk of lo- losing that money. And I'm like, oh my God, I know you. I know what you told me. But what hurt me the most was that my kids came to this house and they thought they were moving in that day. And I had to come pick him up and say, no, that's not, this is not the day. But by the grace of God, nine days later, we moved in. That's a different testimony for another day. But we had to believe God. Like, no, I know what you said, God. I, I, I know this is painful. Sometimes it doesn't work out the way you, you thought it was going to work out. And, and there are times where you feel like giving up. You feel like caving in. You feel like quitting. You don't want to do this faith stuff anymore. Living by faith is, is, is at the risk of looking foolish. Sometimes you say something and it doesn't happen. And, and it wasn't God. It was you. And you look stupid and all of that. I got it. I've been through everything. I got several t-shirts. But I'm saying you have to believe that God is faithful. This series, I'm going to teach you that God is faithful to his word. Now, you don't have to. You don't have to become who God called you to be. If you don't want to live this life of faith, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do nothing. But if you want, if you want to maximize the purpose and the potential God placed inside of you, you're going to have to build up the grit, the determination, and the resolve to never give up, never cave in, and never quit. God is faithful. God has provided the yes. I'm determined to provide the amen. Say amen to that. All right, let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for leading me to level up in this season. I level up by believing every promise. I refuse to quit. I am determined to become the man or woman you've destined me to be. I will never derail myself from my destiny. I believe everything you've ever spoken over me. And I do not allow what I see to cause me to change what you said. Every promise from you shall come to pass. I am not moved. I am not shaken. I keep believing until I see everything you said. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, you want my notes, go to todaysword.org. There's a big red subscribe button. Click on it, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. God wants you to keep believing. You can give up if you want to, but I don't know about you. There's no quit in me. I refuse to give up. I refuse to derail myself from my destiny. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. And every promise God has spoken over me shall come to pass. I want you to say amen to that as well. So listen, do me a favor. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message has been a blessing to you, and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm going to keep flowing in this vein, so come back tomorrow. God bless you.